Good afternoon, Dr. Gary here, Dr. Gary on the road. Today's topic is, what does it cost the sellers if the dental practice sale doesn't go through? We are dental practice brokers and we've had our business healthcare practice sales for 11 years now and we're excited to keep on growing in fact next week we go to uh, Nashville Memphis and uh, Chattanooga Tennessee very excited about that meet new people we're meeting three new DSO groups and about four or five dental offices to see. we're excited so we've been in business 11 years. I was a dentist for 25 years. We now have eight employees and we are growing. Here to help you at any time. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. 201-663-0935. And our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. Dentalpracticeguide.com. All the information we're giving you here is for information that is for entertainment purposes. This is not legal or business advice. It's simply my opinion. Anyway, so we've done many, many transactions over the years in several different states. Unfortunately, not all the deals go through. Out of about 35, 30 to 40 percent of them will not go through, unfortunately, even after an offer is made. Generally, if it's a DSO putting the deal together, the success rate and closing rate is significantly higher. Maybe it's an 80, 85% closing rate. Whereas with the general dentist or private sale, it's about a 60% closing rate. It's unfortunately, there's so many moving parts. So today's question, today's title is, what does it cost the seller in the sale of a dental practice if the deal doesn't go through? Well. A lot of that will depend on the attorney fees and etc., accounting fees, and how far along the deal has proceeded. So, one of the uh, we just had a situation like this. Now, the sale, the letter of intent was negotiated. That took obviously attorney time. It's going to cost you. The contract was created. And, uh, and negotiated. We negotiated and, and negotiated that whole contract. Now in this situation, I think, the, uh, I think it may have been a DSO, but um, the only reason the deal fell apart was there's chaos last minute at the seller's office of people quitting. But the contract was finished. It was created by the, uh, uh, by the DSO, that is the buyer. Um, however, the seller's attorney still had to review the whole contract, negotiate the whole contract. So he spent a lot of time on that. Now, we were coming down pretty much to the home stretch within two weeks of closing. And sorry, we were within two weeks of closing and uh, there was in problems happened on the seller's practice, a lot of chaos. We went over that in another tape. But as far as the costs go, well, the seller has already had his accounting fees and the, you know, the impact it was going to have his consultations with his accountant, preparing reports from his accountant. That's all finished. So he was responsible for all those fees. You simply have to pay that, whether the deal goes through or it didn't. So it would cost him his accounting fees. Maybe that was 1000 maybe 2000 maybe 2500 Every deal is different. But he had to pay for all his accounting fees. And now the attorney fees... Now, we were two weeks from closing, which means the contracts were already finished. The letter of intent had previously been negotiated. Terms of the employment contract negotiated. And the final contract negotiated. Now, the contract was done. All we had to do was sign it. So the only remaining things for the attorney to do at this point was to go through the official closing, which is done remotely and electronically. But he still have to prepare and, and agree with the... Uh, the closing statement, make sure any monies that were owed, we've had a payoff notices, etc. So that was pretty much finished also. So the contract is finished, 
all the payoff statements and any money the doctors may have owed because everything has to be paid off at closing. That is, if the seller owes any money, that was all paid off. So now came, the deal didn't go through. The seller still has the responsibility of the, all the attorney fees. And the attorney at this point did 90% of the work. So what happens under those circumstances? The deal doesn't go through. The attorney did 90% of the work. Well, the attorney has to be paid. It's not like you say to the attorney, well, the deal didn't go through, I can't pay you. You're responsible for those attorney fees. Sometimes attorneys will give you a little break. But if he did 90% of the work, I guess 90% of the fee is owed. Uh, you know, if things rekindle with the same buyer, yeah, it's going to be discount, obviously, heavily, because a lot of the work's been done. But under the circumstances, the deal has officially fallen apart, and it may close later, but under those circumstances, you have to pay the attorney his fees, so you'd be responsible for what fees you have to pay, all of your well, fees to your account, your professional fees, all the legal keys, uh, fees of what the attorney charged you, you're responsible for those fees, too. And that's what it is. But... Things will start up again, and don't worry, we'll get the practice sold for you. We got your back all the time. Thank you.